Welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from a Frontier. Thank you kindly, as always, for stopping by. Let me start with um, uh, two Hennessys I met yesterday, Rock and Maurice, uh, both cousins um, and eighth generation of the family line, uh, Maison Hennessy. Um, and uh, we discussed many things and we'll be publishing a couple of interviews momentarily. But uh, what, you know, there's so many interesting uh, angles. One of them was the fact that Hennessy is the most cited brand in the history of RAN. Um, and we talked about business longevity, luxury, um, LVMH, Moe, Hennessy. Um, very interesting and uh, uh, enthralling conversation. Have a look at uh, this. This is a short clip of um, the presidential suite at the Kapinski, uh, where, of course, this function was, but where President Obama stayed as well when he visited. It was a positive tipping point for the hotel. My knowledge of the world is people, and that's what I'm interested in, Maurice said as well to me. Macro thoughts, you've got to click on this tweet by Chi Girl, trade war ride be like, she says. Warning signs in emerging markets, this is by David Inglis, interesting uh, data points. The ruble is extending its plunge as investors unwind long bond positions, um, and it's really sunk of late down 1% at 64.345. Um, let me have a quick look where we are now. 63.877 for your guides is slightly better. Um, trimming an earlier loss of as much as 2.7%. The yield on 10-year ruble bonds was up nine basis points at 7.68%. The cost of insuring Russian dollar debt against default jumped to the highest since August. Sokgen had a very interesting call on the ruble rand trade um, that's hit its target. They were shorting the ruble against the rand, predicting a 7.5% appreciation in the rand, citing a divergence in political narratives uh, with South Africa benefiting from new President Cyril Ramaphosa's reforms and Russia suffering from tensions with the US and Europe. Washington's new sanctions against Russian oligarchs are seen as close to President Vladimir Putin late on Friday accelerating that divergence. More than three standard deviation move in Russian stocks, that was the day before yesterday, a drop more than 11%, that's from the Queen of Charts. And that took me back to um, a piece I'd written about financial and information warfare struggles. And I was saying that is the way of the 21st century. And there's been a wave of financial warfare. Take Iran, the currencies dumped, Turkey's at a record low, and now Russia um, is coming under the cosh as well. Um, in December 2014, I was talking about Obama and saying it's very 21st century shock and awe, and that Obama has been a very subtle, skilled, and hard-nosed exponent of currency and then oil warfare. And uh, I think we're seeing a return of that skill uh, in the markets right now. The Turkish lira weakened to beyond a record low of 4.1 against the dollar, which has only recently crossed four. In Iran, you can see outside, these are all ordinary people, mothers, fathers, some are with their kids. The feeling is that the dollar is a better investment. Few home thoughts, karma has no menu. You get served what you deserve. There is a lot of warmth in an old cognac. I think I drank far too much last night and was wandering around. My head is cotton wool. But it is a lovely drink. As Kapuczynski says in, it, in the book Imperium, there is a lot of warmth in an old cognac, a lot of sun. It will go to one's head calmly, without hurry. 
Political reflections and narrow, limited attack is unlikely to deter repeated chemical weapons use, while a broader one could have unintended and uncontrollable consequences. Trump's dilemma on Syria, and I concluded by saying Russia has to deter, otherwise its intervention is a paper tiger. Russian ambassadors saying they will shoot down US missiles fired at Syria and retaliate against launch sites. Uh, preventing an attack, a Russian warplane pushed a French cruise missile equipped warship in the eastern Mediterranean Sea on distance. So we got a highly volatile mix in the Middle East. Um, I don't think it's proven that President Assad uh, use chemical weapons, notwithstanding the lynch mob. That's practically Pavlovian in these instances. We've seen it in Libya when ostensibly the intervention happened because he was going to kill his own citizens in Benghazi, but they weren't his own citizens, they were mercenaries. Um, uh, Saddam Hussein, uh, another example, he never had chemical weapons. And here, this is the first time Russia's uh, reputation will be on the line. He's sitting there bitching and moaning inside Trump world via Vanity Fair. Trump's friends say the president is dry tinder awaiting a match. In the past, Trump's impulses could be tempered by the calming presence of loyal aides like Oak Hicks and longtime security chief Keith Schiller. But both Hicks and Schiller are gone, leaving Trump to operate largely unchecked. His legal team remains leaderless following the resignation of Trump's personal lawyer, John Dowd, and Trump's decision against replacing him with husband and wife attorneys Joseph D. Genova and Victoria Tonsi. Trump has fully marginalized his long-suffering chief of staff, John Kelly. Trump's just doing his own thing now. The Trump friend said. Sources close to Trump tell Axios this is the president you're going to see more of from here on out, unvarnished, untethered. Um, uh, so we've got clearly a president who's much more in the cockpit now, feels that he's surrounded with himself with people who, for the most part, share his worldview, which is quite dark. The social network, this is a tweet from Quinta Brunson, a photograph of Zuckerberg, 26th of March, I wrote a piece, sell Facebook, I still stand by that. I think Facebook is an existential crisis um, and it's all about it being an behaving like an intermediary hawking all our information to all and sundry versus the point that it should really be acting as an intermediary leveraging uh, the knowledge it has of our data to get something better for its two billion consumers. Au Congrès, Zuckerberg s'accuse sans remettre en cause le modèle Facebook. I like the photograph from AFP and this photograph from AFP as well that Breitbart News used. China's massive plan to build trade routes from Asia to Africa and Europe is gaining momentum. Um, President Xi Jinping's flagship Belt and Road project was announced about five years ago. It gave impetus to billions of dollars of Chinese investment, some of which were already in the pipeline for several years to build railways, roads, ports and power plants. The program isn't without controversy, debt risk is rising, an influx of Chinese workers has fueled tension with locals, and there are worries about China's dominance in the region, and not all the projects have succeeded. It's been a mixed bag so far, said Michael Kugelman. There have certainly been success stories, and there will be more of them too, but there have also been set. Myanmar's Kiapu pipeline is one of the projects. Pakistan's Guada port I've spoken about before. Asia Pacific rail links is another. Kenya railways, the new standard gauge railway. Pakistan's Thar coal. 
that took me back to August 2017 when I said Xi Jinping's One Belt, One Road program binds the world to Beijing because all the roads and railways have but one destination, and that is China. Um, Louis Vuitton, who really don't strip out all the uh, financials, said in a context of supply constraints, both Rock and Maurice were talking about the frost and the weather affecting production. Hennessy cognac volumes increased by 5% whilst maintaining its high quality. Uh, Hennessy cognac volumes increased by 5% while maintaining its high quality. China and the United States posted growth in line with the trend seen in the second half of 2017. Those are the biggest markets. Um, Station F, where LVMH has a startup program, is the world's largest startup incubator. Um, I visited it in November last year. I want France to be a startup nation, a nation that thinks and moves like a startup. That was Emmanuel Macron. There's some strikes going on right now, but I still stand by my December article when I said Emmanuel Macron has given France back its mojo. LVMH's Wines and Spirits Division, which includes Moet, Chandon, and Hennessy Cognac, posted an organic sales increase of 10% in the first quarter of the year. Let's move on to the currency markets. Euro dollar, 123.67. Dollar index has slipped to 89.50. Japanese yen, 107.01. Swiss franc, 0.9594. The pound, 141.88. The Australian dollar, 0 0.7750, India rupee 65.165, South Korean one 1068 13, the real 340 91, that's softened. Egyptian pound 17.67, unchanged, South African rand sitting just above 12 at 12.04. I think it's a buy above 12. Dollar index, I'll put up a three month chart, my stock remains at 88. We've softened off the 90 level to 89.50. Euro dollar um, last trading at 123.67. But I think, you know, as we can see from the chart, 125.60 remains the key level. Gold last trading at 1343.50. Um, and that's obviously been lifted by geopolitical uncertainty. Crude oil has surged to the top of its trading range. Currently trading at $65.50. This is right at the top of the trading range. Interestingly, another commodity, sugar, is at the same price level it was at 1973. That chart is from Peter Brent. Let's move on uh, to Sub Saharan Africa sounding the alarm on Africa's debt. That's by the Brookings Institute. By 2017, some economies, Chad, Mozambique, South Sudan, Sudan, and Zimbabwe, had run into serious trouble. And the multilateral organizations finally woke up and paid the problem some attention. Last year, the debt to GDP ratio breached the 50% mark. And the multilaterals gently warned economies such as Ethiopia, Cameroon, Ghana, Kenya, Mauritania, and Zambia that they needed to rein in public spending. But we believe that until one of Africa's big five economies, Nigeria, South Africa, Angola, Ethiopia, and Kenya, becomes debt distressed, the alarm bells won't truly be rung. Um, several countries are clearly in trouble, but there are small economies, Cape Verde, Gambia, Congo, Mozambique, and Mauritania have debt to GDP ratios near or above 100%, but keep in mind collective GDP is less than $30 billion. Even with the next five countries in the ranking, the top 10, the total is still less than $100 billion. But the total for the top 15 starts to look worrisome. The five additional countries, Sudan, Angola, Kenya, Gabon, and Mauritius, have a collective GDP of more than $300 billion and debt-to-GDP ratios about 50%. Keep in mind also that Angola and Kenya are two of the largest economies in sub-Saharan Africa, estimated to be one-eighth of the region's economic output. Having doubted its debt-to-GDP ratio, Nigeria moves up 11 slots, having doubled its debt-to-GDP ratio, with more than a quadrupling of their debt-to-GDP ratios 
between 2010 and 2016, South Sudan and Equatorial Guinea, both resource-rich countries, move up from the bottom third to the middle or even the top. Chad, Gabon, Zambia and other resource-rich economies fare almost as badly. In 2016, the subcontinent experienced negative per capita growth for the first time since 1999 and growth in 2017 was anemic. 2018 is not expected to be much better. I asked yesterday, is Zambia a harbinger for sub-Saharan African debt markets? Growing Chinese debt leaves Angola with little spare oil because they collateralized their loans with oil barrels. The price of oil has fallen, they're having to deliver more barrels. Angola has found itself with a dwindling amount of crude oil to sell as more of its oil flows to China for debt repayment, leaving little revenue for anything from the oil sector development to health care in one of Africa's largest oil exporting nations. Oil back debts are now estimated to have ballooned to $25 billion. Existing contracts meant Angola had only one cargo to sell on the spot market, in February traders said. Possibly there is no way out of this dilemma for many countries, one source familiar with the situation said, adding they would have to learn to live with less oil to sell. France says it wants EU sanctions on Zimbabwe gone. This is President Mnangagwa's Twitter feed. Um, he also says African Development Bank Group Akin Adesina says the bank is keen on and assisting Zimbabwe on debt. Unilever CEO Paul Polman says his company ain't going anywhere and will keep investing. November, I wrote about how the Zimbabwe the genie is out of the bottle. South African oil share is down 4.63% year to date. The ruble's one-month volatility jumped 2.6 percentage points, the most since May, to 11.9 percent, the highest among the world currencies after the South African rand. Dollar versus rand, as I said, we're around the 12.04 level. I like this tweet from Hoya Wolf, the, the Abuja Life. Nigeria all shares up 5.9 percent year to date. The Ghana Stock Exchange Composite Index is up 31.83 percent year to date. Vital Group's African venture Vivo Energy is to float in London and Johannesburg. Helios have a big stake in this. Uh, the public offering of the company, which sells Shell branded fuels and lubricants in 15 countries, is one of a string of large listings expected in Europe which is on course for its busiest start of the year since 2015. Vic Vivo was established in December 2011 through the carve-out of Shell Africa's downstream business. It's wholly owned by VTOL, the world's largest oil trader in Helios, an Africa-focused private investment firm. Um, since the 2011 takeover, Vivo has spent $600 million on expanding its retail network and sold 9 billion litres of fuel and lubricants in 2017, nearly 40% higher than when it took over. The World Bank issued its Kenya economic update and they are saying Kenya's growth is expected to rebound in 2018 to 5.5% from 4.8% in 2017, um, and expecting growth to rise steadily to about 6.1% by 2020. They're also saying the government should rethink its fiscal consolidation plan, uh, saying that the government should slow the rate of expansion of recurrent expenditure, improve spending efficiency, restore the potency of monetary policy, and rationalize tax exemptions to ensure its resources are fiscally sustainable. The budget deficit more than doubled to 8.9% in the five years through June 2017. When you cut your development spending, you are reducing the capital stock of the economy. That has implications for long-term growth. So Alan Dennis, an economist in the uh, In Kenya, British soldiers train in massive war games. That's Tristan McConnell for Yahoo. High up on Kenya's Laikipia Plateau. Hundreds of British soldiers spent a recent half-moon night fording a river, marching across wadis and over escarpments before attacking a mocked-up 
army training camp. Uh, we're very much part of life here, Wood said. The aim of the training isn't to inflate soldiers' confidence with easy wins, but to push them sometimes to the point of defeat. It's a challenging war fighting mission against an impressive and well equipped army, said Perry, the assault exercise. Telcom Kenya and Airtel Kenya are seeking a merger to take on Safaricom. Uh, first step to acquiring all of Airtel's assets, two operators have a combined 23% share of Kenya's 41 million mobile subscribers, but have long struggled to compete with Safaricom. The disparity is even wider in revenue terms with Safaricom, which is 35% held by Vodacom, enjoying more than 90% um, of the market of total revenues in voice and uh, short messages. Commanding lead in mobile phone money transfer with his Mpesa service regulated by the central bank. Um, saying this is a cold, calculated business strategy between Barty and Telcom. But the point is, how will Airtel's debt be treated? And I think that's the key stumbling block to keep an eye out on. The competition study they had done becomes toilet paper. This is referring to market dominance. Take notice that the Central Bank of Kenya being dissatisfied with the part of the judgment of Justice Odunga intends to appeal. This is the case of De La Rue. I think it was an erroneous judicial decision. Um, because De La Rue is not a briefcase operator, has a facility here which employs 300 people. Where Uchumi is right now, it needs some cash almost immediately. We are looking for a financial investor. I don't think they're going to find one, I'm afraid. Uchumi needs to raise as much as $69.3 million this year to hold off the competition. Who on earth is going to give it to them? Um, you might as well just sit back and do a a fresh startup. Loss making chain store expects to reach a decision this week. Company, they're saying we'll get a 10% deposit of the price immediately. They're looking at selling some land on the Fika Super Highway. Uchumi share price data is there on rich wrap ups. Nairobi old shares up 12.85% this year. Safaricom, MPES, and PayPal are partnering to boost e commerce in Kenya. Um, which was something I referred to in January when I recommended Safaricom. I said, you know, the portfolio will stay long Safaricom. I believe geographical expansion and the e-commerce opportunity have not yet been baked into the price. Safaricom is up 18.695% year-to-date. The NSC 20 is up 2.83% year-to-date. Barclays is up 34.895% year-to-date. Finally, um, leave you with a photograph of uh, um, Maurice uh, Hennessy, who really was very, very entertaining, interesting. Talked to him about his childhood somewhere near Niamey, uh, not childhood as a young boy, a young man. He visited there, the work he did, and how he was desperate to taste an apple, and then he was with somebody who never tasted one, and he shared his apple. So very interesting indeed. And once again, thank you for stopping by.